TV Sound System, you know what it is, select Hype Live and Direct. Remember to hit that like, hit that subscribe button, comment, and let me know all of those selectors, DJs, sound systems that you want me to interview. Now, th there's been a few interviews that have been popping off right about now. It's been absolutely crazy. We've been talking to the real generals then, but at the same time, we've been talking about past, present, and future. And I had to get this guy up inside the building because he has done a lot inside the city of Wolverhampton, inside the UK from where I come from. So all the people who are logging in to um, TV Sound System and seeing me interview some of the top of top sounds, um, we have some real generals um, who have been paving the way and doing their thing. They've been in the business for a minute, but at the same time, we don't really get that time out to kind of like talk to them and see what they're doing right about now. And this guy that I'm talking to right now is so much of one of those people them who we have to talk about the future. I really believe that this guy has put in the works and between now and 20, God knows how long, he's going to definitely be a part of what's going on. We're talking to no other than the man himself, DJ Phoenix. What, 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 what? It's been a long time, Selector Hype. It's been a mad thing. It's been a long, long time. First of all, welcome. Yes, and thank you for having me as well. I love what you're doing. I love the platform and everything that you're doing. And I wish you a whole heap of success mad thing. in the future. You know what I'm saying? With your future endeavors and everything. So, so you know what? What I'm doing right about now is all about a thing called past, present and future. Yes, So the sir. people who don't know about Phoenix, mm -hmm. let's talk about the past. Okay. Phoenix. <laughs> Briefly, just let yeah. the people them know exactly who you are and what you're about. Well, I am one of the, I would like to consider myself a prolific DJ um, slash selector entertainer from Wolverhampton. Um, I've come from low in the ranks to midway to high in the ranks in my um era of of uh selecting and juggling for the for the mass mm. um in the dance hall arena um i've won many of clashes and mm -hmm. um, dj competitions you know i've played with a lot of um um entertainers you know famous and not so famous i've done a lot of work with a lot of people so mm. you know what i mean the journey has been great it's been rocky it's been up it's been down but I give thanks for every single minute of what I've been through in this in this industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And where did it start for you, DJ Phoenix? Um, where did the whole music concept start for you? The whole thing started back in school when I was, I would say, I want to say about 13, 14. Um, I used to go on frontline radio. And um, that was the era, that was the time when you was on there with yeah. Corporal Dan. Mm -hmm. And um, my mum was on the station, Ruby J, who you're familiar with as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to go up there with her on, on her show and answer the phone. So I was just playing secretary at first. <laughs> um, and then I started a little group with a couple of my friends at school. One of them's your cousin, Natty, Natty mm -hmm. Edwards. Yeah. Um, and we called ourselves the Shock Absorbers. Um, can't remember who came up with the name, but... <laughs> it's just one of them things and back then it my name was just clinton irie mm. um and that came off actually a song that my cousin maccabee wrote for me when i was 10 mm -hmm. so yeah actually it started before i was 13 14 then yeah. but um djing properly and all that kind of stuff was like 13 14 there's there's, there's a lot of um because this is the thing about this this channel and what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. When it comes to whether it's regardless of sound systems or DJs, mm. there's so much happening that yeah, there is. I could sit down with you for like three hours yeah. and have a conversation, and we still would that would just be so scratching the surface we as well. Really have to, yeah. It's it's literally doing that. So fast forwarding, mad fast mm -hmm. to DJ Phoenix. Mm -hmm. When was it that time where you thought? Raw people actually acknowledging all that work that you put in and all that early days in um, to be like where you're at 
now and really took it on a professional level? I think Frontline was the stepping stone Mm -hmm. and Skyline was the that's where you need to be stone. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I got to Skyline, um, I knew something was about to change. Something was it because, you know, I'm not going to pussy for to go go around the thing. Mm -hmm. Frontline was League One. Mm -hmm. Skyline was the premiership. It, Mm -hmm. It just is what it is. Um, when I got to Skyline, the first DJ I saw playing on the station while while I was in there was DJ Robbie. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him for years now, but uh-huh. pick up yourself, DJ Robbie. Anywhere you are right now, DJ Robbie, the first man. Archie D brought me up to the station and he said, right, this guy's playing. Just watch him. I'm going to leave you with him. Mm-hmm. And when he's finished, he's going to drop you home. Mm-hmm. And then he all took off from there. But a uh, a uh, uh, the pinnacle of me joining Skyline was when, when I knew something's going to come out of this was, it was the second time I played at Destiny's. Mm -hmm. And this is the time when Captain and Country was already for years running the roads. And then the first time I played, it was kind of rocky. But the second time I played, Mm -hmm. I made such an impact that Captain and Country asked me to join CNC. Mm -hmm. For me, just coming up in the ranks, that was like Manchester United seeing you play football and saying, yo, do you want to, you get me? That was like, whoa. So when they asked me to join the join the team, I was like, of course. I, I didn't even think about it twice. It was just straight away. So basically what you're saying is like, you kind of like, Let's not get it twisted. Yeah. Very, very talented that you just kind of like step footed straight into the big league. Yeah. There was a lot of things going on around that time there. Um, I seen you doing your thing as Phoenix, as a young general going through. Mm-hmm. And like he says, you just mad fast forward the thing. Yeah. Um, and then going straight up into the ranks where you linked up with CNC. Yeah. Linking up with them. How how was how was the vibes there? How how could you see like the the whole progression going on? Um, <laughs> one of the things I remember Captain saying to me was um, when I just joined them, and this was when Destiny's days, Club Crush, mm-hmm. who was all over the place. And, and for those who who are, who are watching right about now, I'm talking about so what's Destiny's and what's yeah Club yeah, Crush? yeah. <laughs> these are some of the elite clubs them. Trust that me, took place. You know Trust I mean? me. The, the, these are the club those days. were the days yeah they were, those were the club days where things were happening yeah was popping off you on a play. weekly basis yeah. as well you know what I mean you there was always Destiny's, something going on not now go on. nah you can't play in club orange not trust now. me so trust many, me so many places but yeah man continue yeah so um, one of the things I remember Captain saying it was I'm sure it was around the time we was either playing in Club Crush the night mm. or we just got the booking to play at Club Crush maybe in the next couple of weeks or whatever. And he said to me, um, yeah, so Phoenix joined the team, no, you know, so I've got to charge some extra money, no, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when he said that, I thought, yeah, man, <laughs> mm-hmm. the thing I shot, no. Yeah. You get me? So yeah, from then it was like, whoa. And so- how, did, how did you adjust to what's going on? Because... If man's saying yo, your money's up now, yeah, clearly then you're gonna have to up your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah, how yeah. did you how did you find a, a way to adjust? Because at the end of the day, you're joining with a big team, CNC yeah. Music Factory, which is Captain and Country Judah, mm-hmm. who was leading. Yeah, yeah, the by whole far, by of, a country of man, the, yeah. of, of the West Midlands. And yeah. to, for you to come in, how did you manage yourself to adjust with what's going on? Um, basically, just take teaching. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're never too old to learn. I don't care how old you are. You're never too old to learn. But I was obviously the young cat in the group. Um, you know, they both taught me different aspects of the DJ Phoenix that people know now. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, first of all, it was just me learning off my mom and DJs from Frontline and Skyline, such as yourself as well. Mm-hmm. But when I was taken under Captain and Country's wings, Captain taught me how to talk, mm-hmm. how to talk to the crowd, yeah. how to command the crowd and demand what I want from the people to deliver a good performance. And Country taught me how to select. Mm-hmm. He taught me how to 
read the crowd, watch them, see what you're playing, who it's re- who's reacting to it, who's not reacting, what mm. time to turn the level up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Different things just like that. But I just took learning, I just took teaching, mm-hmm. listen to everything they said. You know what I mean? They told me what's good, what's not good. You know what I mean? Everything, everything. I owe a lot to them, to be honest. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. And and again, it's like, big shout out to everybody who's logging in right about now. Like I said, it's past, present and future. That's how we're doing the thing right about now. We've got some of the old school them. If you go and look and click onto some of the videos then. But I definitely have to have Phoenix inside the building because he's somebody that I really think that is definitely represented and put in the works them right now. Mm-hmm. So... We're going to continue with that, that whole CNC music factory situation because mm-hmm. eventually we're going to have the interview with, with, with the CNC music factory. Mm-hmm. Um, you already told them or told the listeners them um, the key things and what you learned from Captain mm-hmm. and what you learned from Country. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, out of circumstances, whatever, you decided to part ways, mm. do your own thing. Is there any... What was the... I don't want to go too deep into the ask thing. Ask anything you want to ask, hype. You're but my brother. How, how, how did it, how, what was the reason for you to be on such an elite team for you to look in yourself and say, you know what, this isn't for me? Mm. Where, where, where did that separation happen? Um, it was just like, like any like any pop group, any R and B group, any reggae group, things happen. You know, you become a family, and families sometimes squabble. Teeth and tongue must meet. You know what I mean? So, it was just one of them things where it wasn't even really me and Captain. If we're gonna be real about it, me and Captain are cool. We've always mm-hmm. been cool. I don't think me and Captain's ever had an argument. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Country and myself, we just kept bickering about certain things mm. and it was always the same thing mm. and then um you know people got involved and then i just decided you know what i can't i can't i can't continue to do this and i'm being loyal to who i'm around but they're not they're not returning the favor mm-hmm. so you know things escalated in public as well mm. And then I decided, you know what, I, I can't do this no more. I'm I'm leaving CNC. We even had a meeting and we we, we just come together, mm-hmm. you know, and I said, this is it for me. This is the last straw. Country still took bookings for myself and him like a team, but it wasn't that, you know what I mean? Like I would never take a booking for me and Country. It, was, it, it, it wasn't that time. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. ship had sailed a long time ago, mm-hmm. but, um, He'd still take bookings for me and him. And then shit hit the fan for the last time. Mm. And then I don't think we've spoke since. Okay. You know what I mean? And this was a few years ago now. Mm-hmm. And is that is that something that can be rectified? Because when the, when these things happen, mm. and, I, and, and this is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, is because... I'm such a fan of, of everybody what's doing their thing is and I'm put it on camera because sometimes man don't want to talk to each yeah, other but yeah, you see yeah. where we reach right now mm. maybe a conversation like this may turn something I'm actually glad that you're doing is, something is, like is, this is it something where you can holler back to country and say yo good I don't think so and you know I don't mad, think so you know that's 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 never never <laughs> You know what I mean? It's one of them ones. You know, I'm I'm just glad that I can laugh about it now, mm-hmm. and I'm not, um, in the place where I was two years ago. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I've I've got too much to lose in in, in what I'm doing besides the music business, which you know about, mm-hmm. and you know, t- for me to be thinking negative and thinking the way that I was thinking before, it's just not that time anymore, man. And sometimes you gotta just let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. Water under the bridge is just water under the bridge. And sometimes you got to carry on and just let some luggage stay back there. And that's what he is to me, unfortunately, now. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, at some point, you, you can make that happen again. Yeah. But at the same time, kind of understand where you're coming from and I can kind of like understand where he's coming from. Yeah. Um, It'll be interesting to see what he says. It, 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 what I would like to know is like, 
how what do you think you could have brought to the table to CNC if everything was good because they was already mad good yeah what would you have brought to the table if this scenario didn't take place what um, would have you have done in like I yeah. think we're talking about 2019. Now. I'm talking 2020 now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How would you evolve the CNC music factory considering mm-hmm. their mad kind of cool weather this, right yeah. now? Um, it would have been just a, a, a different flavor because to be honest, the advantage that CNC music had at that time when I was with them, you got to understand CNC had their own fans And I had my own fans. You know I had a mad fan base. Mm -hmm. And my fan base were the young the younger cats. They had some of the young cats and all of the big people. Mm -hmm. So when we joined together, some of the bigger heads started to take a shine to me. And some of my fans was like, Oh, so you who were those guys? Some of them didn't know them. Mm -hmm. Some of the young guys that used to follow me didn't really know much about Captain Country. They didn't know which one was Captain, which one was Country. You know what I mean? So with me joining them, they got some new fans as well. So mm-hmm. it, it was something that always would just grow and grow and grow year after year after year. Mm-hmm. And from then to, as you said, 2020, 2020 would have been crazy, man. Mm-hmm. We would have been probably keeping concerts ourselves and yeah. doing big stuff like that. But we're not going to keep on to the thing. Uh, big mm-hmm. up CNC Music Factory. Yeah, man. Every time, and, every time. And, and, and big up everything what you, the two of you or the three of you came together with. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was, a, it was a big deal. It was a good moment in, in the time. And it's, it was. It's nice for you to just be honest and just yeah. let the people them know exactly what's going on without yeah, going yeah, yeah. too deep. Mm-hmm. But like I says, when I call people for an interview, we don't really too dwell on other people's things you know what i mean yeah really, yeah, we're, yeah we're really going to focus on yourself now so leaving cnc music factory um to be honest it seemed like a very calm transition yeah you went and you you started to do dj phoenix um how did you feel as as a solo dj coming out and what did you do to make yourself so relevant because Leaving CNC, there was a very key moment mm-hmm. in this industry where we're at in Wolverhampton and the West Midlands. You was really up there. <laughs> how did you? How did you manage to 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 keep yourself relevant for that period of time? Um, what did I do? Just branding myself, really. Like, I'd like to believe, and I'm sure I was one of the, if not the first selector slash dj to have my name printed on t-shirts uh-huh. you know what i mean yeah. i remember the clash and i won it at tropical harmony mm-hmm. and that was one of the first times people saw a dj's name on some girls t-shirts and that mm-hmm. like i remember you know what i mean so just branding myself constantly putting out mixed cds mm-hmm. you know trying to be everywhere and everywhere mm-hmm. you know what i mean it was just one of them just always concentrating on being um a household name did you find it easy because at that time there if mm. you if you kind of like look at what was going on there was a lot of djs there's a lot of selectors them out there um did you find it kind of hard to compete with what was going on um it can be a bit strenuous and a bit hard when you're part of a team and then you break away and you've got to do it all on your own now mm. it, it, it's go it, you're gonna feel a bit of you know what I mean? Stress and strain, but it's all dependent on the love you have for what you're attributing yourself to. You get me? Um, it wasn't difficult, but there were times when I missed my group. Mm-hmm. And there were also times when I was just, I was glad that I'm doing it on my own now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've That was just university for me. Frontline mm-hmm. was my junior school days mm-hmm. skyline was senior school yeah. cnc music factory was university and then leaving cnc was going out and making it on your own okay. in the big world that, and that's then, what and then making it out on 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 your own for the people who are watching right about now and, and probably seeing selector have and be like yo 
we do the big interviews with some of the some of the top sounds then, but I mm. still have to come back to my ends them and 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 rock with my real man. Yeah. Then, you know? Let's talk about like as a DJ and the clash vibe things and the DJ com- competitions and because you won many. Yeah, yeah. Let's not get it twisted. Yeah. <laughs> Your trophy catalog is not that empty. No, no, no. There's a few that you've won. It's, so, qu- it's quite impressive. Yeah, so for the people them just just let them know them for the for, for the people um, know like how we how we how how competitive things are are, are in like the city of Wolverhampton. Just it, to reel off some some titles fam. Um let me see. I'm Lord of the Manor champion twice. Mm-hmm. Um what am I? Um, I won the junior DJ competition twice. Mm-hmm. Um, I beat Scratchy at uh, what was it? Um, Clash Mondays was it? One of the Mondays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just a few. Man. I can't remember all of the titles at the minute. I've won some awards as well while I was on Skyline. Mm-hmm. Um, I do actually call myself the six star general because there, I've won six clashes, not including the two junior clashes. Mm-hmm. So naming all six, I can't remember the um, all six names of the clashes, but um, yeah, Lord of the Manor, Defend Your Manor, the second one I was most proud of. Mm. I think that's the clash. I'm, I don't think I've played as good as that clash mm. since that clash. I don't I don't mm-hmm. think I have. I don't remember. I don't remember. But that clash was the one. And I was with CNC at that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I remember as well, um, not to take anything from Captain, but I remember the one time, I think it was that clash. It was one that I won. And I played him a selection of songs. And he said, boy... I wouldn't go in with that, you know, mm. if, if that's all you got. I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought, nah, man, I've got it. I've got it. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And I went and I won. You know what I mean? I don't mm. know if Captain remembers this, but that is what happened. And, yeah. you know, I didn't make it phase me. I just thought, nah, I believe in me. I've got me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just go and do what I've got to do. And I did it and I came out the victor, so. There's so many things we've talked about. And the reason why I'm doing this right is for the people who are watching, Mm -hmm. we have so many different things in the pipeline that's going to be happening. A lot of people don't know about DJ Phoenix. And a lot of the people who know some of the big sounds I've interviewed don't know certain things. But Mm -hmm. I really believe that we're going to have a couple of other interviews where... Mm -hmm we can sit down and just focus on a certain scenario yeah, and just focus on that one. Fast forward to the present right now. Mm -hmm. You have been mad busy, Mm -hmm. mad busy. And in terms of mad busy, being an entrepreneur, setting up your own business. And I think that took a lot away from your music. Yeah, it did. Um, So just let the people that know away from the music, what have you been doing? Um, I opened up um, and started my own business um, in terms of my own barber shop. Um, it's called HD Barbers or High Definition. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in the middle of expanding that right now, but I've had that shop now for four years. Um, I'm on schedule with my five-year plan, which was to have that small um, headquarters um, build up on my clientele and five year, after five years, open up a bigger shop and mm-hmm. expand in terms of um, the business is itself and um, the, the staff. Yeah. So I've had it for four years. Next year, December 21st, will be f- marking five years. So f- anytime from January... I would like to be opening my new my new joint. Yeah. And, uh, did that did that inf- affect your music career? And it, yeah. and, and when it did, mm-hmm. clearly, when you was starting your business, you could see things happening. Times yeah. was changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How 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 much of effect of that was that on you in terms of like having to focus on your business, but but really knowing that. Yeah. When these competitions or dances are taking place, mm-hmm. you could have shelled that easily. Yeah. When man, I get a thirty well, pound money pull up, you could have got. To, no, to be honest, to be honest, it like focusing, taking my focus off the music for a minute, 
I say a mini, it's been longer than a mini, but yeah. taking the focus off the music and just focusing on the business um, wasn't the only thing that kind of slowed down the music thing. It wasn't just the business. It was a yeah. whole load of things. But mm -hmm. um, basically, I put up a meme before. I made my own meme and I said, the caption was, I used to look forward to going out on a Friday night, mm -hmm. but now I look forward to opening my shop on a Saturday morning. So meaning mm -hmm. me going out on a Friday night, it's going to be a, it's going to be a mission for me to wake up Saturday morning and <laughs> open them doors and, yeah. you know, cut hair properly to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? To the standards that I know I can. And um, so I thought, boy, that's gonna have to kind of slow down now. There's a lot of dances over four years. There's a lot of dances that I didn't get to go to because mm. I know I've got to go to bed and wake up fresh and get to work. So I found myself only going out if I'm playing. So if mm. I'm playing out and I'm getting paid, I will go and do but it. But at the same time, is that is that a kind of scenario where you didn't even have to go to the events then because there's certain key d dances that take place mm -hmm. and there's certain DJs and selects them who don't seem to, to be able to bring across something that would make you want to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when yeah, you yeah. say like, yo, yo I, I can go to bed and, and, yeah, and, and yeah, wake yeah. up in the morning <laughs> and you feel like you don't want to go to these events, then yeah. is that a case of that the DJs them, and the selectors them, um, and the promoters and the events them, are not really making you even feel like, so you know what, I need to go to make myself current, does that make you just feel like you're very comfortable in this situation that you're in that you don't have um, to actually go? I don't know. If that makes sense. And I, I get what you mean, but um, it, it, it was a it was a whole load of things. It was a cocktail of things, man. Mm. It was um, you know, it on one side it was boy, I've got to get up and get to work in the morning, so I don't even really want to. And then on another side it was like, well, these promoters ain't really messing with me anymore anyway, mm. like. And then on another side, it was, boy, can I, wow. yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> and then on another side, it was like, what can I even afford it? Because I've put a lot of money into what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it was a whole cocktail. It was a whole mix mm -hmm. of things. But, you know, with, with, with the music thing, like I try to tell young bloods that are coming up in the ranks now, there's a lot of politics in this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what level you're at, you're going to experience politics. Mm. trust me I felt it like full force and still going through it a little bit now but it doesn't really bother me because I have a plan B and that's mm. one thing that I, I'll never forget when when you said to me before and um, when we was planning um King of Wolves yeah and then it fell through the first time mm -hmm. or so, something happened and I said boy hype you know rare 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 and then you said to me always have a plan B. Mm -hmm. That one sentence there, I'll never forget that sentence and I'll take that to the grave. Always have a plan B. And mm -hmm. because of that as well, I'll teach my children that as well. Just because Selector Hype said to me, always have a plan B. Just that little sentence mm -hmm. there meant a lot. You know what I mean? So thank you for that. Yeah, man. <laughs> definitely. Because <laughs> we can go on to King, King of Wolves. Yeah. For everybody who knows or don't know, it was one of the biggest events that took place in the city of Wolverhampton. I think it was Would the biggest event in Wolverhampton for the last 10 years. Yeah. Let's, let's not, let's if not. It's, if it's not a, if it, was, <laughs> if it was a Skyline birthday party, it was King of Wolves. It was King of Wolves, man. There, there, a lot of things didn't take, a lot of things never took place until that time there. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go too mad into it. Mm -hmm. um, for the people that know, it was what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great combination it was, between it the was, two it of was. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a, a great turnout and that. So we're going to, we've already talked about that. So yeah. who, who doesn't know, maybe we have another uh, Yeah, another yeah, we can, we can, we can do this again. Um, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a mad thing. Um, but I'm going to fast forward a little bit forward on that. And... Um, Talk about um, what a lot of people did come back to me and 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 say, and you kind of put it out there, mm -hmm. and we're not gonna str we're not gonna be on it for too long. Yeah, yeah, it was that point where UK Rumble was happening. Yes, <laughs> Jamma Nuclear was up inside the building. If yeah, people yeah, know yeah. Selector Hype, formerly from Jamma Nuclear, the whole King of Wolves thing. Yeah. Um, 
you kind of let the people them know that you played some kind of part mm -hmm. in that scenario at that UK Rumble. If you can let the people them know, because the people who are going to be watching, they'll mm -hmm. be like, yo, so what? Phoenix, Jai and Jaman. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, where we don't know where that situation is without going too deep in how how was that mm. scenario for that short amount of time or what happened or where is it right now um well engine as you know is my brother's uncle so mm -hmm. when i when i talk to engine i address him as uncle mm -hmm. you know what i mean out of respect so he approached me by phone call and he asked me to join the team this was this must have been about two, three months before anybody knew. Mm. Um, before I put the picture up on Facebook. Um, I said, yeah, okay, I'll join. Um, we started linking up, you know, we had meetings every Sunday, you know, going through the dub box and whatever, learning, learning, the, learning the records and stuff. And then you know, took a couple of pictures and then I put the infamous one up oh. and that's when everybody's, yeah, everybody's had to lose Everybody their mind. Really yeah. <laughs> so, but like, like I always say as well, every move I make is calculated. So mm. I can take a picture today and I'm not going to put it up on Facebook for another month. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know so what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing what and I know what's going to happen when I do it as well. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, that was that. We, you know, got together, did what we was doing, learned through the music and whatnot. We um, discussed who was going to be doing what and rare, rare, rare. I can say that on the night of the UK Rumble, what we said was we were going to do prior to that night, it's not what you saw. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We said, we were, well, it was said that this is what was going to happen. And then on the night, it didn't go that way. Mm. Not fully, it didn't go that way. Um, just for the record as well, I don't believe that when Jaman, when we got kicked out, we shouldn't have got kicked out then. I yeah. think it should have been yeah. willpower, if I'm going to be honest. I think it should have been willpower. Um, and anybody who was there, if you saw really what was going on, then you would have agreed with that. But I think it was the lack of experience that we had at that level, mm -hmm. why we didn't say to Chin or anybody else. Yo, you got to do that again, card. I don't yeah. think we're supposed to come out there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's history. The yeah, past yeah, is the yeah. past and that's L what happens. Literally, the reason why I kind of asked that question because the people, if I interviewed you now, yeah, they're going to be asking, they're going to want to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I'm not part of Jamman playing, now. Which is, you know? which is, I think everybody knows that. Yeah, by yeah, now yeah. Still, but, but it is what it is. At that time there, and, and and seeing that little part of, of that scenario mm -hmm. and then being at Rumble, whether you played as much as a part of, of what you did or what people want to assume that you didn't do. Yeah. Looking out on the crowd, is that something that you think you could be a part of? Is Sound System Ting mm. something that you think, you know what, I could do this, you know? Or do you feel, feel very comfortable in planning the future um, as a DJ Phoenix and, and just still continue being solo. You know what? I would love to be a part of a sound system um, and do the whole sound clash thing. I'd, of, of course, man, I'd love to. Like the reason why I said yes to Engine was because I believed and still do today that um, everything I could achieve by myself, I've done it now. Mm. There was nothing else I could do. For me to go to, you know, a world-class stage or, uh, you know, at that level, I can't do it as DJ Phoenix. You're going to have to join an entity now or yeah. even create one. You know what I mean? But um, Engine came at the right time and he said, yo, I've got a proposition for you. Mm -hmm. And I decided and said yes. Um, it didn't work for the long run. Mm -hmm. Um but again, I take it as another life lesson. Yeah. Um, you know, if somebody else was to come to me and say, you want to join this team, I would have to consider it and think about it very carefully first, mm. not just because of who it is. I have to think about everything around it and how is it going to benefit me and why do they really need me? Mm -hmm. Can they have to show me mm -hmm. what 
what it is that I have that they feel they're missing in mm. their team. So from yeah. that, we can make a formal decision yeah. on whether or not I'd join their team or not. Well, like I said, I think um, it's very honest for you to come out and say that. And like yeah. I said, I, I, I would not come in and ask and, and have you here and ask those kind of questions because it has to be asked, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's just fast forward to present moment right about now. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the big dance that's going to be taking place very soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In October. <laughs> yes, sir. The 5th. It's going to be a showdown. Yeah. Are you back and fully prepared for what is going to be taking place? I am back. I'm not fully prepared yet. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, there's little... There's always room for improvement. And just for the you people I mean? who are just logging on, it's all about the impact clash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the first DJ that I've had up inside the place okay, talking okay. about the impact clash. So, like I said, past, present, and future. Yeah. Now let's let's solely talk about impact clash. DJ Phoenix, you're going up against some some big gunners up yes, inside the building. Yes. And when I say big gunners, I'm not talking about the future. Mm -hmm. We've got the Black Rhino up inside yeah. the building. Mm -hmm. We've got Apache Warrior who yes. is on fire right They're now. They're doing some great work right now, man. They're putting in the work, man. You and get me? It's, it's, a, it's a big look right now. Mm -hmm. How are you going to prepare yourself considering all those things that we just literally talked yeah. about? Everything from the beginning mm -hmm. to, to playing Gemma and, and having these things, the CNC Music Factory, this and that. How are you going to take all that experience mm -hmm. to come into... A dance like Impact Clash, where you kind of not been on the scene, but yeah. constantly been mm -hmm. knowing what I go on. Yeah, How yeah, are yeah. you gonna go in there now and real represent? Because we haven't even talked about the clashes then where you've been in and really come with some real novelty some stuff. Thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how are you gonna go to impact clashes? Impact clash we're gonna deal with right now. G Cross my editor, he's got that thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's like the new wave then for the younger sounds and the younger DJs um, and not taking any way away because anything away from you because you've been in some mm -hmm. in this thing for a minute. Yeah. But now yeah. we're in the you're gonna have to step in. How how yeah. how are your thoughts on the whole clash? Um, my thoughts on this impact clash coming up is 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 it's a brilliant idea. It's a brilliant marketing scheme. Um, that G Cos, the Mad Editor, and KD Melody have come up with. Mm -hmm. I really like what they're doing as well in the industry. You know, they're keeping the clash vibe alive for the young, the young future veterans. Mm. Um. What they're doing is just immense. It's 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 brilliant. I did. I just worked with them as well a, a few weeks ago. They brought me down to PST, where mm -hmm. the clash is going to be. Okay. I've played down there a few times in the past, but G Cos he never leaves me out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Real, even if it's, you know, you know. yeah, man. Even yeah, if it's yeah, once yeah. a year, he's going to call yeah, me and say, crazy. "Yo." I mean, he just called me the other day and he said, um, "I forwarded your name and your number to one geezer, so I'll look out for his call." I said, mm. "Yeah, safe." You know what I mean? But um. Impact Clash. Impact Clash. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not fully ready yet, but uh -huh. I actually the last clash, the last Impact Clash, I said to I said to Gikos, yo, when are you keeping the next one, shout mm. me. Even if it's to even if it's to MC it. Yeah. But I want to be a part of it. You get me? <laughs> and he says, yeah, man, cool, cool, cool. He called me up a few weeks later. And this was when the date was originally supposed to be for September, if you remember. Yeah. And then they had to move it back to October. But he, he called me up and he says, yo, you want to be in it? And I said, yeah, man, who's in it? He told me, Trendsetter, Apache, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? A couple of the names have been um, swapped. There was one that was in it. He's not in it now. So Black mm -hmm. Rhino's replacing. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just one of them ones. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't... I think the last clash was uh, the King of Wolves, so yeah. I haven't clashed for a while. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm constantly listening to clashes, constantly listening to um, just dancehall juggling, whether it be mixtapes or watching things on YouTube, you know, even practicing at home every now and again. So mm. I don't, I haven't lost touch 100%. I'm just not in it like how I was before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, don't wake a sleeping lion. Okay, so yeah. so definitely you know exactly how to, to yeah. approach the event and, and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Anybody that 
is in that event where you're kind of like thinking, okay, yeah, that might bring something kind of crazy. Apache Warrior. It will always be Apache Warrior. And the reason being is because Remy's, Remy's like my little brother. I love Remy. Remy Remy's, Remy's my brethren. You know what I mean? Um, Remy reminds me of myself and I've told him this mm-hmm. numerous times. You know what I mean? Um, exactly what he's done and what he's doing is exactly what I did and what I've done. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in terms of like building a little, a little you know what I mean? A little party set and whatever. I did that. Winning clashes, I've done that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Going out playing, putting his name out there. I've done it all. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The only thing he's done that I didn't really get to do was formulate a team. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if there's any, for me, if there's anybody to look out for on the night, it's it's Remy and Apache mm-hmm. Warrior because they're, they're, they're just, it's their time right now. Now, th- there's so many things that we can go back and forth on there. And mm-hmm. this is the reason why we're starting to really put out content because I could sit down and talk to you about so many different things. Impact Clash is one of the main things and where I want the people to know that if you don't know about DJ Phoenix before, he gave you some history on, on his thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so Impact Clash is going to be a big deal. I really think that you're going to come out there and come with something different because you always are one of those selectors who I rate. I rate the youngest them, and especially those who, even in myself, I had to kind of fear King of Wolves. Oh, yeah. No matter how it went, I said, you know what? You have to watch out for them. But yeah. away from that, um, music right now, mm-hmm. dancehall music, the scene, the, the vibes where he's at right now. Mm-hmm. How, how are you seeing it from when you started out mm-hmm. to where you are right now? Because the one thing which I want people to understand, you know, is that you may not know some of these people I mean it's not no discredited to you Phoenix because Mm -hmm. we're on YouTube and the world are watching and not seeing certain things but when man's been in this game for a long time how long we're talking about 10 to like at least 15 years yeah man to this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. how have you seen the team change for yourself Um, to where it is right now um, music is something that I see music like water mm. and um, it, music adapts to change and change adapts to music. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a time where you couldn't say certain things in a dance hall record and now you almost can say anything. Mm. Um, people are more open-minded as well. Um, what wasn't acceptable before is now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think on some level, the culture died a bit and then came back a bit, died a bit and came back a bit. I think there was there was a period where it was just fluctuating. Do you know what I mean? Right yeah. now, I think it's on a good high. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think reggae music, mm-hmm. aside from dancehall, yeah. is like, I think it's at the biggest it's been for the last 10, 15 years. And now. will you change your kind of way of playing music? Because I think that you're one of the selectors and I think you grow with music. And yeah, that's what yeah, I kind yeah. of rate you for. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to stick with that mad way of juggling? Mm-hmm. Or are we going to see a new Phoenix in 2020? Yeah, I would love I would love to um, showcase a different side of me that, you know, my old fans haven't seen before or not seen for a long time Mm -hmm. and something that new fans haven't seen yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, It's just one of them ones where you have to always as well be, you have to always reinvent yourself. You can't Mm -hmm. be the same you was 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. It gets tedious. It gets repetitive and people yearn for new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So sometimes the new isn't, better than it was before yeah. but it's different still so you have to appreciate what's different as well mm-hmm. you know what i mean you can't just because you're a dancehall dj you just love dancehall and you only want to listen to dancehall you have to appreciate other genres of music as well mm-hmm. and be able to play it as well mm-hmm. afro beats right now is crazy mm-hmm. you know what i mean and if you're not if you don't have that in your program when you go out and play something's wrong mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's just about adapting to change and being able to adapt to change as well. Some people can do what other DJs can't. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you rating the DJs and who are out there right now? And if you are, what what are the DJs and who you can kind of like say, okay, I see them man there mm. and they're still consistently doing their thing right now? Um dancehall wise or anybody or any like any in DJ. general, like in general the world is watching that. The DJs <laughs> the DJs around Wolves, the West Midlands anyway, um on the top of my list who I really still love that they're doing what they're doing is obviously it's got to be Platinum Hype, um, Ecstasy, Immortal. Um, DJ wise, um, I love what Sims is doing. Mm-hmm. Sim dog, crazy DJ. Yeah. No, I've got to get the interview. I love with what him. Sims He's doing. Mad crazy. Actually, ask Sim as well about his actual name. Where I used to cut, I used to cut Sim's hair when he used to come from school yeah. and come to the barbershop. Sim is and when he was gonna play his first song, I remember Sim was saying, "Yo, Phoenix, I don't know what to call myself. It's either gonna be what did he <laughs> Sim Dog or um, Mad. It, there was two names he said to me, yeah. and I said, "Yeah, work with Sim Dog." And it was Sim Dog <laughs> for a while, and now it's just DJ yeah, Sims. Yeah. But yeah, Sims. Springer mm-hmm. and J Mac, um, Kingpin is one to look out for as yeah. well. Yeah, he's controlling the whole of the the brunch thing. Yeah, um, I've over heard, in Birmingham. Yeah, I've heard his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kingpin, Kingpin's one to look out for. Still, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, those guys. Mario's always doing his thing. He's always constantly busy. I yeah. saw you big him up the other day for yeah. helping you out. So and he's things. he's just one of them good cats. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there ain't there ain't many like Mario in terms of just a nice guy mm. with no hidden agenda yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not a lot of djs like that today mm-hmm. and that's what i love about mario mm-hmm. yeah. well you people you know what it is it's youtube it's tv sound system it's lecture hype it's past present and future like i says phoenix is up inside the building <laughs> this thing is just going to move forward and forward and forward and forward and forward i'm just letting people them know that some of the selectors and some of the djs and we can we can hit up the stone loves the mighty crowns mm-hmm. we can do the bass of this is we can sit down with the big sounds and but i always says that we're going to do past present and future that's a new episode yeah. that's how we're doing it right yeah. now and we're going to bring in some of the people them them who are from my ends that you may not know but they have a story to tell mm-hmm. and they always have something that is very important i know that we're going to sit down i mean we can talk about yeah. your cousin maca b yeah 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 you know what i mean one yeah. of the international yes. reggae artists out yes. there he was a family member but mm-hmm. we could go deep, deep we could deep, we could do this for man. days man but you know what fam i just want to say thank you so much for just taking the time out yes man yes man it's thank you for having me thank Impact you for having me clash fam Yes, that's what you're gonna October be going. October fifth. Yo, we're gonna end this about. Let's give it another five minutes on Impact yeah. Clash. Impact Clash. Because it's gonna be a problem. People, my fans that used to follow me before, some of you, some of you dropped off. Still, you get me. <laughs> Where <laughs> they gone? Uh, boy, them just. <laughs> you know what? Hype. I got blacklisted, man. For what I got reason? Blacklisted. For... It's really that's for another episode. As long as you're gonna call me back, we can go <laughs> we into can go we can that. go in depth in that. We you can know what I mean? Phoenix, but, boy, Phoenix got yes, blasted. yes, we can do that. But okay. I don't know what happened to some of them, but some of them are still there. They're just waiting for this opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, for me to print some more t-shirts or whatever. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And um, just come out there and support in, in abundance. You know what I mean? So October fifth at PST in Digbeth in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, October fifth. Impact Clash. It's, it's going to be, be yo, Select a Hype Yourself hosting, is hosting man. it. Um, who's in it? Myself versus Remy, Apache Warrior, who won it last, the last, last one. Yeah, Champ, Rainy Champion. Um, Black Rhino. Black Rhino. Mad Hungry right now. Trendsetters. Is it tr- what? Trend, uh, Trendsetters? I think is it Trendsetters? Trendsetters? Yeah. I think it's Trendsetters. Team Setters. Team Setters. Yeah, Team yeah. Setters. Um, who... I really, be, if I, if I, can I be honest? Yeah, man. Yo, come on. Man. <laughs> yo, come on, man. You're so honest. Like I could say, yo, fam, don't fuck around. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be like mad fucking honest. I like, think, I think, I, like I think in my opinion, team setters won it last year. Uh-huh. I was there. Cool. Not taking anything away from Apache Warrior, but mm-hmm. um, I think team setters deserve to win it from the first, from the first, the, the first thing he said on the mic. When he held the he mic, <laughs> he won. He won. You know, he had the biggest. 
Listen, that impact clash should be named after what he done at yeah. that impact clash. Nobody made an impact like he did. I don't even remember his name, <laughs> but um, he come out there and he said, yo, has anybody ever seen a black James Bond? <laughs> and when the man come out and he took off his, 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 his jacket and him just, yeah. you get me? Yeah. He won the clash from that. Seti, seti. You get me? He just, he, he commanded the dance and he led that dance mm -hmm. from the get-go. And for me, he won, but Remy and them, they won. They did a great job. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in my opinion, I think they deserved it more than anybody else on we're that gonna, night. We're going to get all the DJs um, to go come, come and um, do their thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for just taking the time yes, out. Man. Yes, On man. so many levels, man, because again, I don't think... This Has is it been be an hour less. already? Yeah, man. We, we're Bloody happy. hell. Yeah, just clapping at <laughs> right now. But I, I think... Um, I just want to thank you. Yes, man. Thank and you for I, having I, me. I'm, 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 I'm kind of into, um, ending most of my videos by saying, watch out for the future and what's mm -hmm. going on right about now. We started so many things. I mean, if we have to talk about um, the weekly roundup yeah, and yeah, all those yeah. things that we yeah, did, yeah, yeah. we're just reaching these levels here mm -hmm. where we just never forget and we just always keep our yeah. thing moving right now. But DJ Phoenix. Yes, sir. The and all the fans. And all the fans. so much. I want to leave you with the microphone yeah and just say where you want to say to tv sound system and the, i want to say are. big up to tv sound system because you're doing a great job you've got a you know a brilliant platform that you're using here and you're 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 broadening your horizons and you're just making sure that people hear what selector hype's doing and yes you, even my nerves you get on sometimes with all your notifications <laughs> and stuff i'm waking up in the morning <laughs> I got like five notifications on Facebook and they're all Mark Smith, Mark Smith, Mark Smith. I'm like, damn, man. I'm already got <laughs> t-shirt. You know what I mean? How many more you want to buy? <laughs> but yeah, man, you're doing a great job and keep it up. Um, big ups to all the fans. Big up all the selectors in Wolverhampton and Birmingham and surrounding counties. Big up all of them. Some of them don't like me. Some of them I don't like, but big up everybody. You get me? Big up all the fans. Big up all those who matter to me all those who mean the most to me and big up all those who have not forgotten um, what I've done in this business. You know what I mean? The amount of DJs that have come to Wolverhampton and I beat them up and send them home. Big up those who've never forgot all those things I've done. Mm. You get me? So it's just peace out, man. Peace and love and just look out for the future as Hype says. Trust me. The best is yet to come. There I ain't finished yet. Absolutely no way. This is gonna be a one-off you know interview, I mean? man. So we're gonna keep, <laughs> keep we're gonna keep it moving, keep it continuous. It's TV Sound System. Like I said, sh like, share, subscribe, and this is what it is, man. Keep it locked. TV Sound System. We're out. One piece. Mm-hmm.